Thank you, Ann. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to run a little experiment with you all right now. I have a 15 second clip prepared for you, and afterwards, I want to know what was your first reaction, your gut response. How many of you were scared envisioning yourselves in place of the bait? I can see a couple hands showing up. How many of you were surprised? In awe? How many of you wanted to immediately just get out of your chair and go jump in the water right now? <laughs> there we go. We got a couple hands up there. You guys should all be divers. Let's go get in the water right now. Right. As a scuba instructor and a research diver, I'll get in the water every chance I can get, especially if it's a chance to dive with these guys. Sharks have a rather nasty reputation. For centuries, they appeared in various mythologies as harbingers of death and despair. The 1975 release of Jaws terrified viewers that these mindless, man-eating monsters were, were patrolling our shores looking for their next snack. Shark Week fills our TV screens every year with spectacular footage of aerial shark attacks and hyped up pseudo documentaries. The print media certainly doesn't help very much either. Look at some of these titles. Lifeguards unconcerned about shark attack. Shark attack in a lake. They're designed to promote this, this emotional response, all to sell a story. But is this reputation really deserved? Have they earned this reputation? By the end of this talk, it's my sincerest hope that I can convince you that these powerful predators deserve our respect and our protection, not our animosity. Regardless of whether you're a diver or not, why should you care? When you go ahead and look at these guys, they're powerful predators, rows of sharp teeth, it's easy to see where this fear comes from. You ask any diver, and they will go for hours about telling you all these different stories of their recent dive here in Fort Lauderdale, where they're in Fiji. You let the diver go, and they will talk your ear off for as long as they can. I've heard everything from, if I see a shark, can I pet him? To, hell no, I'm not going in there, with a few colorful expletives. My favorite is this one. I can assure you I'm not on the menu, but it helps demonstrate the problem. Just because there's a shark swimming around does not mean he's eyeing you up for his next meal. Throughout this talk, I want you to, to keep in mind why we care about these animals. If they're not there to, to hurt us, what purpose do they serve? There are four reasons why I think you should care about these animals. First, many of the species are suffering a global decline from commercial fishing operations. Second, they're critical for ecosystem health and functioning. Third, they're worth more alive in the tourism industry than dead in a fish market. And fourth, and I may be a little biased with this one, they're just plain awesome. <laughs> Before I dig into these, I want you guys to, to get a little perspective. Last year, there were only 130 confirmed unprovoked shark attacks worldwide, resulting in three fatalities. Florida recorded 28 of these attacks, the highest in the country, with zero fatalities. Since 1882, Broward County has recorded, one, or has recorded 13 shark attacks with one fatality. In 132 years, there have only been 13 attacks here. I think we're pretty safe in Fort Lauderdale. By contrast, we harvest between 26 and 100 million plus sharks per year, globally, for various pieces. This range is so broad because we have issues tracking the populations and the fisheries that are pulling them from the water. One quarter of all chondrichthian species are listed as threatened or worse by the IUCN. For about half the species, we don't even know enough about them to say if they're endangered or not. The two largest trades are in the sales of shark fin and shark meat. It's easy to see considering a single bowl of shark fin soup can retail for over $100. One of the most dangerous and one of the most wasteful ways of harvesting these fins is a process called shark finning. Oftentimes these sharks are hauled on board, fins cut off while the animal is still alive, and the carcass thrown overboard. Without their fins, the sharks cannot move to eat or even breathe and suffer a slow, painful death. Do you know that a finned hammerhead actually washed up on shore in Miami about a month ago? Do you guys remember seeing this article at all? 
the removal of this many individuals has serious problems for, for environmental or for ecosystem functioning. Remember, we remove over 100 million of these guys per year. How many of you are from the Northeast? How many of you have seen deer laying on the side of the road after being hit by a car? Now, how many of you have seen wolves or coyotes roaming around? Not a whole lot. We've hunted most of them down to protect livestock. And with fewer predators, the deer population has exploded. While sharks take the place of wolves as the top predators for the oceans, they help keep the ecosystem healthy by preying on the dead, dying, and overpopulated. When you remove sharks and other top predators, you allow the lower level predators to increase and you get this wave down the food chain. With, fewer, with uh, more of the lower level predators, you have fewer herbivores, meaning more algae, and less of the other benthic competitors like corals or sponges. When you get this wave down the food chain, you can interfere with any one of these components and you end up shifting each of the other components in a respective manner. If you push this system too far, it may never recover. So if sharks are helping to keep the population healthy, so you can read about it in a textbook. You can read about this in any textbook. You walk into a bio, bio one, you'll be able to pull this out. Why do we care? Well, by keeping the ecosystem healthy, we can go ahead and rely on that system for various services. Some of those services may include things like tourism, fisheries, and coastal protection from storms. With the sharks preying on the dead and dying, they help keep the prey populations healthy, which means the reef can function normally. You have a better conditioned reef, it looks better for divers. Healthy fish populations put up a bigger fight for recreational fishermen, and they catch a bigger price at market for commercial fishermen. Hard structures like coral reefs also protect our shorelines from waves and storms. I want you to take a look at this picture. Do you see the waves breaking off in the background and the nice calm water in the foreground? Think of, reef, of, of coral reefs as a speed bump for waves and storms. As the waves approach shore, they drag across the reef and dissipate most of their energy offshore rather than on all those expensive beachfront properties that South Florida is known for. But that service is predicated on there being a healthy coral reef, an active coral community which requires a healthy ecosystem from top to bottom. Remember from the trophic cascade slide on the, the, just previous to this one, that with, other, with sharks and other top predators, you can encourage a healthy ecosystem from top to bottom, translating to more coral growth and better protection for our shorelines. But it's not all doom and gloom. There's one aspect to sharks that can be their saving grace. They're worth more alive in the tourism industry than they are dead in a fish market. Now, what do I mean when I say shark tourism? These are trips and destinations that people can go on that they can dive with and learn about these beautiful creatures in their natural environment. A conservative estimate places the global value of shark tourism at $314 million and supporting 10,000 jobs. Now, this can be critical for small island nations like those in the South Pacific that have few other natural terrestrial resources. Islands like Fiji, Palau, they don't have a lot of landmass. They don't have a lot of agriculture, a lot of mining. What they do have are large ocean real estates and the fisheries that they contain. By showing these economies that they can support their, that they can use sharks as an alternative revenue stream, you can help put some of this money back into those local economies. In Fiji, shark tourism is valued at $42 million. An individual reef shark in Palau can fetch $1.9 million over the course of its lifetime. If that same shark is pulled from the water, it gives the fishermen only $108. In the Bahamas, each shark can be valued at up to $250,000 over its lifetime, as opposed to just $60 once it's removed from the water. Are you seeing a trend here? Sharks can take on a whole new perspective. One is a renewable resource. Now, there are a range of operators and different tactics for, for bringing the sharks in and varying levels of interaction with these animals. Each of them has their various benefits and concerns. Some of those concerns include risk to the divers or injury to the sharks. You have uh, potential concerns over alterations in feeding and migration behaviors. And you also have the concern of training sharks to associate divers with handouts. Those sharks are highly capable of learning, 
there is no consistent evidence to suggest that there has been any alteration in feeding or migratory behavior as a result of tourist operations. With appropriate safety procedures, the risk of injury to either the diver or the sharks can be mitigated. It's important to remember these are wild animals and we need to respect them as such. We are aliens in their environment, so we shouldn't uh, confuse their curiosity with a human bloodlust. Many operators and instructors will tell their students to, to take only pictures and leave only bubbles. But we can do so much more. We can learn about where our food comes from and how it's harvested. We can donate to organizations that promote marine conservation and elect lawmakers that will protect and conserve our underwater resources. As divers, we have a unique perspective. We get to experience this world firsthand. We get to tell everybody of our adventures, of what we see, what we hear, and we get to go and encourage others to join us. So go on, tell your stories. Hopefully one day soon, they'll include more guys like these. Thank you. <laughs>